Alright guys, what's up? This is episode 6, Top Chef Canada 7, Q&A number 6. Um, this was a heavy, heavy episode. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. Um, definitely wanted to go for the history books. Um, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. For those who've watched it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to try to... Or definitely there's some questions that I'm going to answer. And if there's certain ones that I just feel like crosses a path that I don't want to get into, then I'm definitely not going to answer those. I hope you guys can respect that. But with that being said, let's get into these questions. Alright, so Maria asks, Okay, so was Top Chef Canada taped last year or something because you're wearing shorts outside and obviously there isn't snow on the ground. And when the first episode started a few weeks ago, it was still very cold outside. I don't think Canada's Wonderland is open yet either. So what gives? It must have been hard to keep this under wraps for so long. Alright, so as everybody's seen, I I wear shorts and I wear uh, J's in the show and I've answered it before. I do it because for comfort, for my own personal style and it's just part of me who I like to work to show um, and that's just who I am. But in terms of the weather, this obviously, so Top Shot Canada is not shot when you see it. So for instance, the episode aired last week, doesn't mean we're shooting it now. These editing, movies, TV, film, they all take time to edit and film and how it works is really everybody gets um, gets hired for a certain contract for a certain period, certain time and all those things get scheduled. So with that being said, all this was filmed um, previously. Um, how long? I can't really say until the show finishes but it was, it was definitely shot previously um, and it's also shot in like one go so like it's not like you shoot once and then you take like four uh, four days break or you take two weeks break and then you do it again um, it's all in with a certain block of period so that's the most I can say without saying anything outside of my NDA and etc so thanks for the question Maria alright now let's go into our IG posts here um, positively Antonio how many ideas run through your head as you get your challenges? Um, tons of ideas run through my head. Constantly, as I'm creating dishes, ideas are coming coming and going, and it's really more of me just making a decision of do I want to do it, do I not want to do it, does it work, does it not work, do I have time, do I not have time. Um, it's crazy, like, for the show, some of your challenges are insane. Uh, but mushroom ice cream and soup combo was so sick. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that was a really really cool um, Cool quick fire challenge where we had 45 minutes to cook a six course progressive tasting menu for chef Michael Solomonov an amazing highly respected chef um, That was pretty insane to do because tasting menus the chefs are like that's their signature They like make a story about it. They think through they bring you through ups and downs and levels um, for us to pull one off with me, Renee, and Paul to do it with mushrooms in 45 minutes and to even do one that was all vegetarian was pretty dope. Um, so yeah, like how it works with those, with all these challenges in my, um, with my ideas is simply I go, I st go start with one point and then start keep on branching off. If I was the visually describe my brain as I'm thinking of a dish I would start off with it would be in the middle like the main ingredient or concepts or idea and then I start branching off things so for instance it could be starting with texture it can be starting with ingredients so um, let's do the mushroom one right let's go with the mushroom one so it was mushroom and then I think earthiness which I thought about was like herbs or I can think about things like um, when I think earth, I also think of trees. Trees, I think of maple, and then I sort of branch off that maple syrup, and then but then I also think of birch syrup. Think of that. I think of um, mushrooms go well with cream, so I branch off with cream. What's in creaminess? That's a texture, and then I branch off to I need something crispy, or I branch off and need something crunchy. Um, yeah, it's like it's pretty insane to visualize how I come up with a dish, um, but it all just happens in my head. Hope that helps. Thanks for the question, dude. Uh, Tana Shern, uh, congrats on two wins on an episode. Team Wallace, thank you by the way, amazing dancer, go check her out. Um, do you know how the other chefs felt about the so-called cheating scandal? Um, and also, what, also was that whole situation as dramatic as shown on TV? Okay, 
let's see. Let me see how I'm going to tackle this here. Um, I definitely do know how the other chefs felt about this thing because we're all there for it. Um, we were there in front of the judges when it was brought up. We were there when we were told about it um, in the room with everybody. We discussed it in the room. Um, and every everybody did voice their opinion there. Whether or not things are said behind the scenes or personally to someone else, that I don't know, but I really don't care either. It's done and over with. But at that moment, we all knew exactly what was happening. Nothing was left secret. Um, the whole situation is as dramatic as shown on TV. <laughs> the TV one was actually like the better version. It was handled really, really well and professionally. Um, at the end of the day, it's a cooking show. It's not a drama. It's not a. It's not a. You know, it's not a such as like a Big Brother or a Jersey Shore kind of show. So, yes, obviously tempers get thrown, things get said, and like, um, yeah, but it was definitely less, it was very finessed on the show and done in a very professional way. Um, and that's really all I can really say. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say there, Tiana. Um, next question is from Electric Life. This question is not specific to an episode, but what is, it, what is your go-to meal when you make for yourself that is the perfect comfort level you fall back on? For me... Um, fried rice. Fried rice is a big one. Um, anything roasted. Roasted chicken wings, roasted pork bones, um, steamed whole fish, instant noodles with fried egg and spam. Um, what else is one that's like um, super comfort level that I always make all the time? Um, dumplings, I guess. I don't make it all the time, but that's definitely something that's comfort. But yeah, those are the ones for sure. Uh, roasted whole chickens. Um, egg, spam on rice, egg and spam instant noodles, um, yeah, those are really those ones. Oh, even a sandwich, just, I love like sandwiches, just like white bread, toasted, um, fried egg, bacon, ham, spam, um, a little bit of cheese, that was like my like go-to when I was a kid too, so those are my fallback comfort, perfect comfort level foods that I would make. Sylvan Wolf, Sylvan Wolf asks, did you get a chance to debrief with the judges after the claim was made and refuted? So, actually, good question. We actually never get to talk to the judges aside from what you see on TV, meaning when they come talk to us for our dishes and then when we face them in judges' table. Aside from that, we never talk to the judges at all. Um, so, to answer that, nope, didn't do that. Um, does it change anything for you for the rest of the show? It definitely makes it hard. There's definitely a tension in the room after the sh after that incident happens. Um, but yeah, you just gotta go through it. At the end of the day, you don't look back. You don't look back. It's over with. We're all mature individuals. We're all professional chefs, and we just keep cooking. Uh, when when are you selling off cook with Wallace private lessons? Ooh, that's a good one. And I'd be lying if I didn't think of it before. Um, it's just a matter of timing and figuring out what's the best place and time to do it and pricing to make it right but stay tuned Jadel Drake how did you how did it make you feel when Bennett called you out like that and did that affect you at all for the rest of the season it's almost the same as the last question um, how did it make me feel um Everything you saw on the show was pretty close to how I felt. I it was definitely something that was shocking, um, definitely hurt. It wasn't something that I expected or ever want to happen ever again. It did sort of shadow the rest of the show for me in regards to that episode because I came off with you know I won I won with Ben in the Dice Eye Challenge, and then I won the Quick Fire, and then I won the Elimination. So it was like. I was on this high, this three win streak, and then this thing sort of shadowed it a bit, which sucked. Um, it hurt the most, I guess, because as much as we were there together for so long, and to get called up for something that's, that's, you know, your integrity, your personality, your everything that you represent gets put on the line, it, it sucks, right? And you have to defend it, and it's... And it's worse because it's on TV. It's worse because it's going to be broadcast forever and ever. Um, but yeah, it sucked. And it got into a point where it was like, 
I, who I am, how I am, what I do, it represents not just myself, but it represents everybody that's supported me, been around me, family, friends, etc. So when you call, when someone calls someone out like that, um, it sucks. But like I said, done and over with. We're good. Um, Exo just because, which is the last question, uh, says at first I thought you were just standing there eating a lemon. Then I remembered it was rubber ducky. Oh, oh, that's not a question. Oops, my bad. Never mind. There's more. Uh, Jetty asks, you look flustered when they came back from deliberation. We already told that something had come up. No, we weren't told anything was coming up. So what happened was, we got called out, I got chosen to win the challenge. We go back, and usually it's pretty quick for, like, to decide, like, for the, the, the worst dishes to go out, talk, and come back. It's like 10, 10, 15, 20 minutes. This time it was like 45 minutes, like almost an hour. It was long. We're like, what's happening, right? Um, so then when they came back, and... Hayden and Bennett were like a little flustered. They were like really upset. We were qu started to question them about stuff, and then they got really upset that we were questioning things. Um, and that's when we we're like, "What is happening?" And then when Eden calls us all back, we're like, "What?" So, yeah, it was insane. It was just one of those things where like, you don't see it coming, and it just bam hits you. Um, what would you have said if they had decided to eliminate you because of bending the rules? Whew. I really don't know. Like, I would probably say that's, I don't think that's the right decision. I think any chef, any person who's cooked in the industry, even in this competition, we always, we always have what we call soigné pieces or items that we leave to separate just specifically for, whether it's a VIP guest or in this case for the judges. Um, whether it's just even the better flowers or the nicer garnish or this or that. It's just something that obviously industry does. And I would be like, I can show you that again, go through the videotapes, the files, nothing's different. And if after all that and they still want to eliminate me, I'll at least they'll go out integrity, I'll be really upset, like super upset. And I'd be like, there better be like a top chef redemption all-star or something because I'm coming back and I'm coming to take what's mine um, but yeah um, <laughs> BJ123 she says do you brush your teeth with charcoal I don't brush my teeth with charcoal so the reason I'm laughing and the reason she's asking this question is because she's a dental hygienist and um, so I'm assuming she's telling me that sh I should be brushing my teeth with charcoal I've seen people brush their teeth with charcoal um, no, I don't. I, I think I might start though. Um, I definitely want whiter teeth, so yeah. <laughs> Miss Chow English. I can't answer this one. Nice try. She, she asked me if I could, if I won Top Chef Canada. Um, you'll have to find out, find out next episode, episode 7. Um, Electric, Electric Life, another question. This one's officially the last one. Goes, rapid answer. What are two ingredients you personally would never put in the same dish? Um, durian and sticky tofu. I don't know why. Those were the first two things that came to mind. I'm like, two things that just would combat each other. Durian and sticky tofu. Um, yeah. Well, those are all the questions. Thanks, guys, for listening. This was Q&A number six for episode six, Top Chef Canada seven. Um, I do want to end off with saying, whatever happened on the show, it happened, but it's done and over with. Me and Bennett, we're still boys, we're still friends. I have nothing but respect for him and all the other chefs. For anybody that watches this, watches the show. Um, I don't even remember anything that happened like that anymore. I really don't. I, that's how I'm going to think about it. All I remember is Bennett and I did an amazing job at Daisai. He was my, my big brother. I was his little brother. We kicked some ass. We made some amazing food. And that's all that really matters. I, have, I personally, for those who know me and those who think, I really have no time for negativity. Um, I don't want any of that in my life, and I, it doesn't do anybody good. So because of that, so yeah, it's just saying, love the dude, proper Englishman, amazing time. Let's not make that taint what whole six pack chef, what whole the whole Top Chef Canada is all about. It's about the best of the best chefs in all of the country coming out, cooking at incredible challenges under certain pressures and times and ingredients, and just making amazing food and amazing memories so that's it and until then 
see you guys next week. Fingers crossed. Episode 7. Um, five chefs remain. We cook for our last spot to get into the finale. So until then, peace.